<laughs> you wonder why I'm staring at you right yeah, now. Why are you staring at me? What did I do? I missed you, and you're so I cute. I missed you too. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Young at Heart. I'm Lynn Peterson. If and you forgot, I, Al Jones. Al Jones. I remember my name. Yeah, do you remember mine? Yes, yeah. Lynn Peterson. I was only gone for what a week. You were gone, I and know. why were you gone? Because it was fun to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone because, because I needed the, the vacation, number one, because we did that first. That's right. Then I went to my son's graduation from the Coast Guard in That's Cape right. May, New Jersey, and it was wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. I saw the picture, and he looks exactly like a captain or something. He in looks the, like in a real Navy. man. He, he does. He left. He was kind of a man child when he left. I mean, he was a pretty cool kid. Yeah. But he came back a real man. Real man. Yeah. All right. Hoorah. Oh, Hoorah. that's Hoorah. the Marines. Hoorah. And he has a lot of respect for the Marines, <laughs> by the way. And I have a lot of respect for the <laughs> Navy and all these Coast Guard also. Everybody. Anyway, yes. Anyway, it's good to be back here with you, Al. You look you. sunny and bright as always. Thank you. I missed you. Oh, you're so yes. cute. Yeah. Oh. So we're not even going to talk about the royal no. wedding coming up. So did that done. Okay, let's talk about the price of gas in France. Oh my goodness, the price of gas. A thief went into Paris to plan to steal some paintings from the Louvre. Did I say that right? The Louvre. After caref carefully planning, he got past security, stole the paintings, and made it safe in his van. However, he was captured only two blocks away when his van ran out of gas. When asked how he could mastermind such a crime and then make such an obvi obvious error, yeah. he replied, Monsieur, that is the reason I stole the paintings. I have no Monet. <laughs> I have <laughs> buy no Monet <laughs> no, to buy Degas <laughs> to, buy to, to make, make the Van Gogh. <laughs> See if you have De Gaulle <laughs> to send this one on to someone else. I sent it to you because I figured I had nothing to lose. <laughs> And only we would say that. <laughs> only we would say that on the air and not feel really stupid. That's right. <laughs> that was funny. It was pretty funny. Uh, where the heck do they come up with these things? That's I don't pretty. Know. That's pretty ingenious. No it Monet is. to no buy Monet. Degas. <laughs> what is to buy Degas? I know what the painting is. Degas. Degas. Oh, Degas. Oh, Degas. Oh, thank you. She was Degas. Degas. <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was like one of those no. terms I mean, that you say on the street. Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, the gas. Yeah, that, that's right. Hey, uh, the, like the other to buy bogus. Or that's right. To buy nothing. Nothing. That's right. what I meant. Okay. I want to tell you that the DAV. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. The, yeah, remember that. Yes. Okay. yes. Disabled American veterans here in Pahrump, they need drivers. And you can call Sam Riddell. Yeah. That's and right. Sam's number is 751-1199, and that would be a great help out there if you can help uh, as a driver. Right. And you don't need to belong to the DAV. No, you don't. Yeah. Do you have to have a special license, though, like a no. bus driver's license or well, anything? What they'll or? do is train you and show you exactly what you have to do, but just volunteers, okay. that's what they need. Terrific. And, uh, and on that note about the DAV, does something come up? Yeah, well, this uh, 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 we have a convention coming up on the first right and I want to just say that the Nevada Credit Union mm -hmm. Federal Credit Union gave us a few of these little uh, calculators to the to DAV up, yeah to the yeah. DAV to take up to, to the, the convention. convention I think so that's I thought great that it was nice and that's you, very nice very nice see and you had people giving us other thing they also gave us the little bunnies the little bunnies with the, the little that's bunnies right with the, yeah they gave a it was Easter those. just a few days ago yeah they gave us those little Easter bunnies which Yay. were nice dun, 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 dun. that was yeah. good oh I should have brought it with me you know peeps everybody loves peeps those little yeah cushy mush or mushroomy <laughs> no they're marshmallowy kind of little right yeah what are those called peeps peeps and they had the funniest thing in people magazine of scenes from movie using peeps like the movie inception with mm -hmm. uh, uh dicaprio it, they had in peepshin with mm -hmm. little peeps like in the air and <laughs> <laughs> the guys in um um that were in the mine accident they had them little peeps bringing little them peeps up oh god it was so funny very good i just thought i'd mention that because it was easter anyway we've got a great lineup today some interesting information and Thanks. some fun so stay with us because we do plan on coming back we will be back but you <laughs> must remember you can't go away yet until you stretch a little bit. I'm stretching. There, no, th oh. there you go. That's better. Oh, I'm <laughs> stretching. How about you? Well, well, no, I'm anyway, we'll get back on time. Oh, just to let you know, too, cleanup day at Crystal Springs, May 21st. We'll get to you on that again at the end of the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to the show, folks. My guest is Will Bond, LWD Incorporated, who's been in business since 2001. And that's the licensed testing center serving the entire USA for drugs, alcohol, I guess it's Drug Alcohol Consortium. Drug and Alcohol Consortium, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, what does all that mean? Well, it's a service that we provide nationwide to the trucking companies and anyone working in safety sensitive functions. Mm -hmm. They're required, uh, while well, it came out in 1991, the Omnibus Act, that any, there would be drug testing. Mm -hmm. And anyone not only working on a federally funded job, but anybody working in a safety sensitive function, such as Department of Transportation, uh, Coast Guard, the railroad, the pipelines, they all have to belong to a drug and alcohol consortium. And what do we do? We manage the program for those various companies. Mm. At the end of the year, we provide their MIS report, which is the management information system, and the highway patrol in various states require that, which is a, brings up another good point. These rules were initially adapted by the, uh, what, FMCSA, and they were adapted by a lot of the states throughout the nation, Nevada for one, California for one, and uh, lots of other states. But we work primarily in California and Nevada, but we do have companies nationwide. For example, New York City Water Works, Pasadena City College, uh, and almost all of the ready-mix companies in Southern California. Mm -mm. And uh, we provide, as I said, the MIS report at the end of the year. And that MIS report tells how many drivers a particular company had tested during the year. And if there was a failure or a positive test result in there, then what did they do with that person who tested positive? Did they keep him on and send him to rehab and a substance abuse professional and the follow-up program? or? A lot of the companies have a zero tolerance company rule, and they terminate that driver on uh, right there. He's done, and they, uh, they're required to give him the consequences of a positive drug test. Wow. And once they do <coughs> that, their obligations are fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, there's some companies that do train the people for further use. That puts them into a follow-up program, and that person might require testing for up to up to five years and they can say should they be up to 12 tests per year and and the follow-up uh, was one thing that was changed just recently any follow-up test now must be an observed collection wow so <coughs> who does the testing the testing is done it's done by a lab quest okay. and or medtox we are preferred collection site for quest in california mm -hmm. so we have a lot of companies that send their employees with the custody and control form they come into us we do the collection and the results go back to that company oh. that's different from the our clients who mm -hmm. are signed up that we will manage their drug and alcohol program mm -hmm. With those, we do the collection, send it into our lab, which is Quest and or Medtox, and the results are sent back to us. And mm -hmm. we maintain the records for that company for the balance of that year. And every year, at the beginning of the year, all of our companies have to renew. Another important thing that they do is every quarter, we have four quarterly selections for random drug testing. And we have to have the driver's list updated prior to doing that random test. Because if we don't have it updated, they're not going to be in compliance with the fate and or st uh, state agency because when they go out and do an inspection on these companies, the Highway Patrol and or the Department of Transportation, Transportation agent is subject to call us and say, okay, we're testing ABC company. How many drivers do you have on the list? then would you name those drivers please? And how many have been tested? And do you have a pre-employment test result, negative test result, in the file of each of those employees? So, and then what the DOT and or Highway Patrol normally does is they interview the company first and they ask them these same questions. Then after they get the answer from the company, they call us for confirmation. Mm. And a lot of times they say, well, we will give them the five or 10 or 20 or 30 names on the list. And they say, well, how about Sam Jones? Is he on the list? No, we don't have a Sam Jones. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs> wow. And then they write the company up for mm. not having an updated list. 
Another interesting point too is we are managing their drug and alcohol program, but they are the one that's liable for it. If there is any violations, mm -hmm. the company is the one liable, mm -hmm. and the fines can be astronomical if the companies get caught. Mm -hmm. so, 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 in other words, uh, buses, trucks, oh yes, buses, the trucks, trucks, company, trucks yes. and things like that. Yes. And I, one thing I wanted to ask you before I forget, you know, doing. doing uh, what about uh, youngsters? Uh, anything? Yes, with we those? do a lot of testing uh, for for youngsters. Uh, sometimes the parents will be in doubt. Uh -huh. They will call us and set up an appointment and bring the person in. We sign or we have them fill out the necessary necessary documents allowing that they uh, be tested, and we test that person and then send the results directly back to the parents. Uh -huh. The reason I was wondering about that also, and I'm thinking myself because I did work uh, for West Care before I had to have an operation, but I had to do the same thing. I had to go in and be tested. And now that's, is that company like Quest? Well, Quest is a lab. They are that's what I mean. I yes. went to that for, yes. for a lab and was tested. Yes. And I was clear, of course. Of course. Right. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> yeah. But this is so interesting. So interesting. Uh, well, it is interesting and it's extensive. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, I mean, there are just pages and pages and pages of rules and regulations on these this drug testing. And mm -hmm. it's... Uh, Something, you learn something new on it every, every day. day. And the Department of Transportation don't change the rules very mm -hmm. often, but there have been a couple of added rules. Mm -hmm. Normally, the DOT and or the, any federal agency, they test for THC, PCP, opiates, GHB, which is ecstasy, cocaine, amphetamines, Anything? and methamphetamines. And they just added the ecstasy test. Mm. And prior to that, it had been five basic tests, known as the basic, the five, the DOT-5. Mm -hmm. And it had been that way for 20 years, yeah. no let me, changes. Yeah, let me ask this question. <clears throat> On the testing, and I'm not asking for numbers or anything, but what about, uh, do you find many who, say, maybe fail the test? Is there a percentage of those that fail uh, the test because of There is. It's very low good. on our company drivers. Oh, we, d we do the random testing on the uh -huh. company drivers, good. and those drivers all know that there uh -huh. will be a random selection done four times per year, and we will show up on site at 5 a.m. in the morning and say, okay, you, you, and you have been selected for a random test. Come into the uh, wow. collection site, please. Mm. And then we go, we... Uh, the requirements are that there's no running water allowed in the testing site. There has to be blue dye in the commode. Mm -hmm. uh, no chemicals in the bathroom. Uh, we make them empty their pockets, mm -hmm. totally turn yeah. their pockets inside out, wash their hands profusely with a lot of water in case they have anything under their nails. Mm. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, That's extensive. It is. Yes, it is. And it has to be because... Right. A lot of people still try to bring in a hidden specimen. I got gotcha. you. And they tape it to their <laughs> leg. Right. The only oh, problem wow. is, is the temperature is usually off. Oh. So once we have it, okay, we have a cold specimen. Uh, we notify the person, you produced a cold specimen. We're going to have to have you stand by and do an observed collection. And at when, the, <laughs> when that starts, <laughs> right. uh, a lot of them get real nervous real quick. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes they say, well, I don't have time to wait. I can't stay. And we tell them, okay, if you don't complete the test, it's considered the same as a positive. Wow. So it's, uh, it's something I've been doing for a long time, and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And we have really a good working relationship with some of the highway patrol mm -hmm. uh, because they know us. I mean, we've been there forever. And Irwindale, mm. California is, used to be the truck center of Southern California because mm. all your rock quarries are there, ready mix companies, and uh, so we, we're pretty well established for only mm. being in it 20 years. Wow. Is there anything you need to leave before the time runs out with uh, our audience in regards to, to uh, this information? Well, it, I moved to Corona, I'm sorry, moved from Corona to mm. Pahrump. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at opening an office here in Pahrump and offering the same services to the clients here because as far as I know, there's no one here that does on-site or mm -hmm. mobile drug testing. Also, I have applied for my CCR 
registration as well. And that will open up all of the federal agencies for drug testing too, because with the feds, they don't use anybody if you're not, if you're not registered with CCR. Right. Well, listen, I want to thank you for okay. coming in, Mr. Bond. Uh, and that information is very interesting because I didn't know. So listen, thanks again. We've got to have you back again. Okay, well, I will I look forward to coming back and giving you a progress report in, say, a year from now. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, folks, stay tuned. We shall return after these messages. Don't go away. Okay. And welcome back. This next interview that we have, it's Dental Implants Institute. And it's, I find it fascinating. You know, they're one of the world's leading in dental reconstruction or whatever. And, and it's, it's alternatives for um, those with their dental work, uh, you know, from denture. We used to have the dentures, the implants, uh, you know, the old things yes. that don't fit caps, and other caps. Stuff, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. i meant well it's just am amazing that they have all these uh, in alternatives now and uh, like i said they are the world leading in this so let's go to that interview i find it fascinating dr cha it's so good to see you again thank you you're looking lovely thank you very much and you have a beautiful smile <laughs> is that because you're married to a dentist no <laughs> Natural. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. <laughs> well, you know, we were we were talking about so many different things, and there's something we haven't talked about, which is your five-in-one procedure. Yes. Can you tell our audience what that means? Well, five-in-one was a natural progression of what we do, and it's a it's a pr natural progression that started out with aesthetic implants. Uh, we figured out that in order to give the best looking anterior aesthetic implants, the most uh, important ingredient to the aesthetic implant is the gums. In order to preserve the gums to the front implants was to, to give that patient a temporary crown that mimics the natural front tooth that patient lost right away. Because natural implants, the, the gum, is it has an arch, okay. like the, the gum that give the natural arch, that what we call papilla. Okay. Let's say uh, you had a car accident and you were gonna lose a front tooth. That front sharp, the pointy gum that, that everybody has, if you lose a front tooth, that becomes flat right away. I see. Yeah, unless you replace that missing tooth right away. So in order to replace that pointed gums, I have to replace that missing tooth right away. So you have to extract the tooth, replace that missing tooth with an implant right away, graft the bone, and I have to give you a temporary that mimics your missing tooth right away. Right. So you have to extract the tooth, implant an implant right away, and graft the bone, and give you a temporary. That's four procedures at one time. Mm -hmm. And that's four in one. Now the fifth procedure, if it's a bad tooth, it's a sinus lift. So that's five in one. I see. Yeah. So, that's so you do this all in one procedure? Yes, all in one procedure. And, all what, and there's another purpose to that, and what is that? That Another pr purpose to that is so that you don't have to create a scar tissue. The other dentist would take the tooth out, wait three months, and you have to do uh, implant placement with another three months. Each time you wait, you're building more scar tissue. Scar tissue is more, more dense, and every time you build that scar tissue, you're shrinking that gum tissue tighter and tighter. And every time you build that scar tissue, it's harder and harder to do surgery. It makes sense. And so now, if somebody has to go through the whole long procedure with a different dentist, then they're losing some of that gum tissue. Does that mean once they have their implants, things might get stuck up in there, or it's still going to be it's gonna pulled be back more from the shrunk tooth. and shrunk and shrunk, and you're going to have longer and longer tooth. Mm -hmm. and so it's not going to look as nice either. It's not going to be natural looking. No. Okay. Yeah. So you have your five and one. They're getting less scar tissue, and the difference again between a traditional dentist and you. You guys are it. You're very very different compared to somebody else, and that's what I really want them to understand. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have. Your, your permanent teeth quicker is rather than eight months to two years of waiting to get your permanent product, you get it within three to four months. That's one advantage. Second advantage, you get one surgery rather than multiple surgery. The third advantage is that you get your more natural looking final results rather than longer teeth or more artificial looking teeth. So you have 
there are multiple advantages. We're typically, our technique is more 10 to 15 years more advanced than traditional technique or other dentists. So I'm not here to brag, but we've done so many, so many surgical procedures and we've been there and done that. And, you know, I guess because we're so advanced, we're not the most popular colleague in dental community. We've written so many articles and we get, because we're so innovative that we get bombarded with, with uh, questions from colleagues, you know, you know, what kind of proof we have, what kind of supportive data that we have. The truth is that we're so far advanced, there's no previous articles published to back us up because we're far, far forward, far front in innovative technique. There's no previous articles to back us up. And that's the toughest thing for us mm -hmm. is that there's no previous articles written because we're the, in the most innovative uh, thinkers out there. And you are, and all you have now are your happy, happy patients. Exactly, only ones who can prove for us are, are happy patients. They're the only proof we have. Very good. So we're, we were talking about the five in one and how they might have a four, four months to complete all this rather than six months to a, two years. Yes. And what I think is important for the audience to know is that you are turnkey here, meaning instead of having to go to several different specialists, yes. you do it all here? Can you yes. explain that? Yes, we do everything from beginning to the end. The advantage is that if anything went wrong or if there's any issue, even two, three years down the road, you know exactly where to come back to fix your problem. Rather than if you had to go to multiple specialists and you went to a one doctor, let's say a surgeon, the surgeon's gonna tell you, well, that's not my problem, you need to go to a restorative doctor to fix it. You go to a restorative doctor, they're gonna say, no, it's surgeon's problem, you go back to a surgeon's problem. It's who, who is a victim here? As a patient, just want the problem fixed. And we saw that as a specialist. We were a surgeon before, and we saw a poor patient being bounced around, getting to run around just to fix a simple problem. And in the end, we said, okay, you know what, come back here, we'll fix that for you. Even though it's not our problem, we felt, we felt sorry for the patient, come here, we'll fix it for you. And it was for the good of the patient, we felt, you know what, we feel sorry for them. Let's just do everything here from beginning to the end so they don't have to be bounced around. Let's do everything here so they know exactly where to come back. And that's one of that's the things, awesome. that's one of the things that we, we felt the need to create a facility where a patient knew exactly where to come back to fix the problem. That's one of the reasons that we opened Dental Implant Institute. Come back here, we'll do everything here, you know where to come back to. Exactly. And we guarantee our work. And for a lot of seniors, that's really important. It's hard for them to get around to all these different doctors and then they get confused. Exactly. So. And all patients want is, I know, I, I know what I want, give me teeth, I know where to come back to fix it. Exactly. They don't, they don't need to know all the great details in between. They and just all it is done. is just a, a colleague a friendly thing. Mm -hmm. It's a, I don't know how to say it. Well, I totally understand what you're saying. <laughs> and I think it's so helpful. And I know that a lot of our listeners right now, they're very intrigued by what we just told them. And there are some possibilities with the 5-in-1 that you wanted to discuss. What are the different possibilities? Well, with the 5-in-1 technique, if you really want to go top of the line dental implant treatment, you can do full mouth reconstruction. We can do anywhere from 20 implants to 28 implants. You can redo the total reconstruction of your full mouth all in one setting. We can give you a brand new set of teeth within four months and not having to miss a meal. Wow. And How that's exciting. something that we can do for you that nobody else can provide. Nobody else. And so let's clarify that. Are you it for this area in Las Vegas? Is there anybody like you? Well, actually, nobody like us in the world. That's why we're so world. busy. And I noticed that you guys have been referred to as a dental implant institute, not only of Las Vegas, but of the world. And is that because you are world renowned? Well, world renowned and what we, our mission, we're, we're getting up there in age and, and we would, uh, I would say that we, maybe we have a 10 years professional career left and we really want to focus on educating younger professionals to pass on this knowledge because we really feel that we have something golden in our knowledge and in, in our skill and we need to teach younger people to pass this knowledge otherwise the, the implant dentistry is the future and we need to teach other people. 
That's our goal. That's great. Well, thank you and your husband for doing everything that you do and really caring about the people enough to figure it out when nobody else has. Yeah, it's really proud. awesome. And you know, you say you don't have much time, but you look great. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you're tricking us on that. <laughs> but when you say you're up in years, but we really, really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much too. Didn't you find that fascinating? It was. I mean, wow. We're very fortunate to have our own teeth. And just to let you know, they will have a bus that will come to Pahrump to pick you up for your appointment. So it's amazing. So please um, keep that in mind and we'll be back after this commercial. I understand I missed a really uh, great meal again. Yes, senora. You missed a great meal at the nugget. At the nugget, huh? At the nugget. What we did cooked you the, guys do? The, we cooked the chicken. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> I was a chef, a uh, chef, uh, Kendrick, <coughs> Tendrick, Kendrick. Uh -huh. So, oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> Pat's it was not just chicken, it was chicken breast. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit my mic. I hope you all, <laughs> any of you that are hard of hearing out there I got your hearing back. <laughs> anyway, it, didn't it was mean so to hit the <laughs> microphone there. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> it was chicken breast. So, why don't we take a look? Okay, hi, folks. Big Al here at the Perump Nugget in the kitchen with. Chef Kendrix Hi. and Dina. You almost forgot, didn't you? No, I didn't almost forget <laughs> your name. Come on, I was just saying it's slow and pronounced, oh. not projecting your name. All righty Dina, then. Miss Dina. How's that? Well, we're uh, glad to be here with you, Al. Yes, always. I enjoy coming in because the chef always prepares something delicioso. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Now, what are you going to prepare today? Today, I'm going to prepare a chicken mayonnaise, mm -hmm. which is a breaded chicken you can see here, um, it's breaded in panko crumbs, which is a Japanese breadcrumb. But this process takes egg wash and flour. So you flour, egg wash, then your panko crumbs. It comes out nice, crispy, and beautiful. Can I ask you one thing uh, before you go on that? How do you get the chicken flat like that? Well, I take a piece of chicken, I butterfly it, then I'll wrap it in plastic wrap, and then I'll pound it out with a mallet. Just Oh, just to be thin so it cooks easy and fast. Which is a great way to get out some of your aggression without breaking your countertops. The other thing right. I want to talk to you about, Al, did you know that there was such a thing as panko breadcrumbs? No. Most people think breadcrumbs come in a little jar, you make them yes. at home. As Chef told you, it's a, like a Japanese breadcrumb. It's almost fine, like a fluffy consistency, makes it light, and also you're going to find it's a different kind of crunchy on your chicken yes. or for whatever else you use it. We happen to like it because if you notice the coloring, mm -hmm. it looks really fresh, it's light and airy. So I think you should try it if you haven't. And you get that in the bakery aisle, uh, the baker's aisle. It's in a box, it says panko breadcrumbs. So if you never knew what it was, you want to try it instead of your just can of regular breadcrumbs that you normally use. Yeah, I've never it's, heard of it. It's very good. good. And it usually comes plain. There's actually no seasoning in it. So if you want to season, you can season it yourself. Okay. What we'll do, we'll take the plate, the crumb, the bread. We'll just put it on a plate. It's actually going to have a spinach salad. Go with this today. Now, can I interrupt if I might? Yes. Some of you were thinking at home, oh my God, that's a very large piece of chicken. I can't eat that much. Wow. Pound your chicken out like Chef explained, cut it in half, and then do the process of the flour, egg wash, and breadcrumbs. And now you have a half of that, which is a lot more proportionate to what some of you are used to. Yes. So don't feel like you have to do this. This is the wow factor when you're entertaining mm -hmm. and you want people to think you're making this fancy dish. Mm -hmm. But if you prefer something smaller, it's very acceptable to cut yes. your chicken in half once you've pounded it. And that's a chicken breast, I assume. Yes. Because yes. uh -huh. okay. I know they have split chicken breasts and then the regular breasts. Right. This is just a boneless yes. breast boneless chicken breasts. that he, yes. he butterflied by slicing it down the center mm -hmm. like an envelope. Mm -hmm. And then he split it open and pounded it. Okay. okay. Absolutely. All right. So you're going to take your spinach, drizzle just a little olive oil, which is healthy. Remember what I told you a couple of times now. You've got to have at least two teaspoons of olive oil a day, heart healthy. Wow. And that's Very good all you for have you. To use. It's not it's a two. lot. Yep. Now you can have a little more, but if you do two teaspoons a day, you're going to find that's very good for your heart. 
and all he's doing is tossing it with the spinach, which, of course, fresh spinach is fantastic. Right. That's also extremely good for you. I'm going to mm. put it on top of the chicken. Mm. Look at that level of color that he's going to create now. Mm. It's going to just make it look... Of course, you can use as much chick uh, excuse me, as much spinach or as less spinach as you as like. You like. Mm -hmm. But I think more the better, if you ask me. Right. <laughs> that looks good. And here, I have grape tomatoes, which are a little sweeter than cherry tomatoes. I, what I did, I cut them in half, and I'll put them on top of the salad. If you ever go to the grocery store, you're going to notice there is all kinds of tomatoes to choose from. Roma tomato, beefsteak tomato, slicing tomato, grape tomato, cherry tomato, heirloom tomato. They're all good, but as Kendrick said, the cherry tomato is sweet. You usually buy them in a small container, so you get several. Cherry tomatoes uh, and our grape tomatoes you can usually find packaged up already for you, so you don't even have to feel and pick them. And then the grape tomatoes also come in yellow which are also very nice if you really wanted to add a whole other dimension of color. Mm. That's beautiful. And at the very end, I'll take a little balsamic and drizzle over just for a little extra flavor. Mm. And everybody loves that. I love balsamic. Mm. That looks good. Now, you can buy these squeeze bottles in the store for a dollar. Mm -hmm. yes. Put your stuff in it, and now you can decorate a plate. So not only can you do that with your olive oil, with your balsamic, but when chef shows you some desserts at a later date, you can put chocolate syrup, marshmallows, caramel in a squeeze bottle and do it on the plate and do squiggles, lines, in dots. Designs. It's amazing. And look at how beautiful that looks. That is. It's lovely. So that is your chicken millinaries. Easy, simple, and delicious. Now, when you did that chicken, Chef Kendrick, did you fry it in a, a deep fryer? No, you just pan sear. Just about maybe an ounce of olive oil. So it's still actually healthy. And you pan fry, pan fry just on both sides till golden brown. And it's so thin, it takes no time to cook. Now the nice part is, that's also healthy. So yes. Chef is giving you ideas to make a healthy piece of what looks like fried chicken, mm -hmm. but it isn't. So he didn't stick it in a big deep vat fryer, which some people are afraid of, especially when you're watching uh, your heart healthiness. He did it so that he did it in a pan on its stove. You look like you're getting a piece of fried chicken, but yet you're getting a really healthy alternative yes. with that crunch. Yes. So when we finally let you taste it, you're going to see that you have a crunch with the nice flavor of that balsamic with the spinach and the tomato. Mm, yes. right? Now, a couple of things that Chef Kendrick and I wanted to point out for you. Whether you come here to the steakhouse, or you go to our cafe, or you visit any of our other wonderful local restaurants in town. You, as a consumer, have the right to care about what you eat. You can't always get exactly what you want, but you can ask for certain things. So, some of you don't know that you can ask for your dressing on the side. And if you dip your fork in the dressing and then take the bite of your salad, it's almost just as much without pouring a big thing of dressing over your salad, and now you're not controlling your portions. So when someone told me that, I thought they were crazy. Mm -hmm. But I tried it, and I got the same amount of flavor as if I would have smothered my salad with the dressing. So that's important. If you have a piece of fish that you want to order, or even a piece of chicken, you can ask for them to saute it or cook it in olive oil as opposed to butter. And that's another thing that people don't realize that you can ask. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and my servers will probably get mad, but some of them will roll their eyes at you because you're asking for something special. Mm -hmm. But when all comes down to it, here at the Nugget, we take pride in making sure that our guests are getting what they want when we can do it. Now, of course, there are times we can't because it's either a pre-made item or it's a, uh, you're asking for something we don't have. But we always do our best, as I think most restaurants do, to accommodate your special needs. So if you have an allergy, I beg you to please make sure you tell your server, don't assume that just because an item's not on the menu doesn't mean it's in the dish. So I always encourage you to sit down and tell the server, by the way, I am allergic to this or this, so that they know, you know what, you can't have that, sir or ma'am, but I can offer you this instead. So just some helpful tips for you that are looking for stuff. Now, that I think good. Al's ready to cut that open. I am ready to cut that open. All right, but I went ahead and gave you a knife and a fork. So, go ahead. We're going to let you. You know, Lynn's not here, and it's 
means I'm going to have to eat a bite. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> All right, come on now. What are you waiting for? You're looking manly. <laughs> They're karate chopping their salad. <laughs> okay, folks. Like I always say, I do it for you. I do not do this for myself. It's I, such pain for him to do this. It is such a pain. Yeah, Make sure you get everything in that bite, buddy. I'm going to get everything in the bite here. Don't forget the tomato. We don't want the tomato to feel left out. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Maybe. Get the tomato, tomato on there. Juice. There you go. <laughs> By Maybe? the time he finishes, there'll be a little juice on there. There you go. Okay. Here we go, folks. Ready? Watch this the for you. Here. For you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a character. I had to close so my eyes on that. It's fantastic. What do you think of that bread crumb? Oh, it's fantastic. It makes you feel like you're having fried chicken. Yes. Folks, delicious. Thank you, Chef Tinder. Absolutely. Chef Tinder, you're welcome. Don't forget, the Bronx Nugget, located at Highway 372 and Highway 160, where the telephone number is 751-6500. Hi, Big Al. We'll see you here. Yum, yum, yum. Have a great day. Great day. Wasn't that... Well, you didn't know. Wasn't that delicious, though? It was delicious. <laughs> it looked delicious. Boom, I boom, wish boom. I... You didn't save me any. No. no it was good, so. though. I, in fact, you I got tell to pound you, the chicken breast? I got a chance to do, do, do. I, well, I, the main thing, I had a chance to eat it. <laughs> you know? That's and it was, really important. It was. It was good. We yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it's always fun to go to the yeah. Nugget for cooking it and is. all that. Anyway, we got another commercial to go to. That's right. Let's do that. We will. Now, this next interview that I did, it was over the phone, but we were talking with uh, eating disorder expert, Tenny McKinney, and I found her very fascinating. I wish we would have had more time with the interview because it, it was just so important. I don't think it's just something that affects young people, but I think older people as well. So this next interview discusses what to look for, how to help family members that might have a disorder. Let's go to that. My name is Elizabeth. I'm bulimic and I've been bulimic for over 30 years. I think about eating 24 seven. The fuller I am, I'm gonna eat this whole chicken. The easier it is for me to get rid of it. It's almost like you go into a trance. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm about to get um, a fix. I can't live like, like this anymore. And my kids are starting to have the same habits that I have. And that really bothers me because I don't want them to go down the same road. This has got to stop. I don't want my gravestone to say she was thin. Good morning, Tony. How are you doing? <clears throat> I am great. How are you this morning? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's uh, You've just been up and at it all day, have you already? It seems like. <laughs> I have. How good for you. I have. Yeah. Um, now, our show, you know, it, it, we, um, we're called Young at Heart, and we kind of gear our show to the older, young at heart people in their, you know, uh, age group, seniors. But I know that we're talking oh, about okay. a, a uh, food addiction that mainly you're saying that statistics show hits younger people at an earlier age. Is that true? And food addiction uh, strikes just about, about anyone, but we're seeing uh, children younger and younger and younger having uh, an eating disorder, anorexia, compulsive overeating. Uh, uh, the youngest that I have visited with has been four years of age, but it's, uh, you know, there's children right now at school practicing bulimia, food restriction, compulsive overeating. Yes, so it is. It's getting down into younger and younger children. What is Causing this, is there a trigger, especially in someone as young as four years of age, you wonder what is it that sets this off? It's about the lookism. Uh, in the United States, it is so about how you look, if you know you have to be thin enough. And so many times, you know, it's not to blame on this on parents. Parents didn't cause the disease, they can't cure it, they can't control it, but they can contribute to it. A lot of your children uh, will have mothers and fathers that uh, have their own eating disorders or their own, uh, you know, perfectionism about their bodies. And so this contributes a lot to children uh, with children having uh, eating disorders. 
It's, it seems like such an epidemic when you look at 11 million people who battle just eating disorders. And I, I know that Absolutely. this is nothing new. We just have more and more research. Uh, how did you get involved in this? I know that you established Shades of Hope Foundation in 87, 1987. Uh, yes, in 1985, I went to treatment for my own eating disorder. I had been in the alcohol drug field since the late 70s while dying from an eating disorder. And I, back in those days, we didn't know what eating disorders were. You know, it's like everything starts on the east and west coast and moves toward the center, and Texas is the last to get the <laughs> info. So uh, I was dying from bulimia, and, uh, you know, my top weight was 289 pounds, and I could lose the weight. I lost uh, 100, 150 pounds five different times, but I'd gain it all back. And the last time I f tapped into taking laxatives and for 13 years took, got up to taking 100 a day, it, my liver was shutting down. I, I was very, very ill. My face was brown with liver spots. So anyway, a therapist that worked for me actually did an intervention on me. And uh, three days later, I was in L.A. going through treatment for my eating disorder that literally saved my life. And I understand that your daughter also went through this. It, was this around the same time as you were? And like you said, is a learned behavior or that she was watching what her mother was doing? Or Well, one of the things that Kim, I have three daughters, and uh, one of the things, I never wanted an overweight child because I'd been overweight all my life. And so I was very restrictive with their food. They only got to eat at meal time. They couldn't eat between meals. And so consequently, I set my uh, children up to have eating disorders. Now, did I give it to them? No, that is an inside job, but I, I contributed to it. So one of the things that Kim did not want to be was overweight. She would look at me and... Uh, you know, she didn't want to be uh, fat. And uh, when I went through treatment, she got very ill while I was there one more time, and she tried to kill herself. So they sent her to the treatment center where I was, and Kim decided she did not want recovery, and it took her two more years to make the decision. And I literally had to give my daughter up for death because I knew that I couldn't do anything to save her. And it's the saddest thing in the world as a parent. To, it's, it's a death watch watching your, ch your child die. But the good news is she's in good recovery and she works with me at the treatment center. In fact, she co, uh, she's my co-therapist on this six weeks uh, taping of the uh, food, uh, Addicted to Food show. Right, and that's going to be on Oprah's own neck, neck work, um every Tuesday. Yeah. Now, you, you said something that's interesting to me. When you say that parents have a habit of contributing to a problem that, you know, most children, it comes from media and everything that, you know, having to look perfect or having to look a certain way. So what would you suggest to a parent? Um, how did, it's kind of a, Two different questions, I guess. One, how do you deal with someone before they get help that you're noticing that they are, they're showing tendencies of uh, a food addiction? And how do you help not to contribute to begin with? So it's kind of two different questions, I guess. Right, right. One of the main things... Uh, Eating disorders, any addiction, are diseases of the feelings. Uh, people with addictions have big feelings and they don't know how to express them. So the food helps to push those feelings down. For parents, one of the best gifts that they can give their children is to have a listening for them, to listen to them, encourage them to talk about their feelings and to claim, name and claim their feelings. Uh, and to pay attention, really listen to their children. That's the best gift. Uh, that parents can give a child and to have time. Uh, love is spelled T-I-M-E. It mm. takes a lot of time, attention, and direction to be a good parent. Yes, it does, as all parents know that well. <laughs> so um, some of the, to look for, the signs to look for, number one, if you think that your child is going through something like that. Well, it's obvious the first thing is the physical appearance. Are they losing weight? Are they gaining weight? Uh, are they 
you know, eating and getting up and going to the bathroom? Are they running water while they're in the, the bathroom? Uh, those are obvious things. Is food missing in the house? Uh, there'll be a lot of times massive amounts of food, not even massive amounts. Is there food missing in the house? Uh, those are obvious things to look for. Okay. And if a parent feels uh, like that's happening, the best idea is to, um, where do they go? Where do parents go? Where do they get the help to help their children? What? One of the first things would be to go to a phys their physician and take the child for a, uh, uh, a you know, a workup, but go to f pick professionals who understand eating disorders and that have been trained in the eating disorder field. Uh, it's not to fault anyone, uh, but a lot of doctors, if they're not trained to recognize eating disorders, will miss the diagnosis. Go to good dietitians who have been trained in the eating disorder field. That's the key, is to find people who have the training for and, and, and can recognize the, the disease through, through the symptoms. Well, I thank you so much, Tenny, for spending time with us and giving us a little more insight into this uh, disease. And uh, everybody knows that they can now go and see your eight-week series, eight-part series on Oprah's own network, and that's on Tuesday evenings at 10 o'clock. Um, is that Eastern time? Eastern time. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Okay, and I thank you very much. Well, thank you, Lynn. Have a good day. Thank you, you, you very much. Uh -huh. And like I said in my interview with Tenny, it's, it, you know, it, you, it mainly hits younger folks, but I would love to have another interview and find out if we have this kind of uh, going on with our loved ones that might be a little older now or if that's mm -hmm. something to be a concern as much as, you know, teenagers. Yeah. But the signs to look out for and what you can do as a support system is very, very important. So we'll be back after this commercial break. All right. All right. We've got all this par paraphernalia on our, our set because yes. it is a drawing. We had the uh, expo, mm -hmm. uh, business expo. It was this past weekend. That's true. And a new company, new uh, mall called the Marketplace. And the computer location is called Great Computer Deals. And guess what? You can win. That is a computer, by the way. It Someone's looks like going a to black win that. blob. But somebody's going to win that computer today. Um, everybody stop by. Uh, KPVM TV's uh, booth over the weekend had a chance to put their name in the drawing, and you are going to dump that into our U.S. mail. I am going US to dump mail. these in here, huh? I think it would be prettier to show the U.S. mail that way. Yeah, I'm going to dump these yeah, in there. Yeah, that looks better. Otherwise, I'll take it these just looks out. like a dirty box. That's what I'll do. Dump these out like that. But this is a new... Um, these here. I'm dumping this out. I guess the marketplace out. is considered a mall. They have yeah. uh, different stores, but the com great computer deals. Discount desktops, laptops, and more. That's a great place to go. I think we went there. In, any, any, nom, any. Uh, I have a feeling that we went there and got some of our business computers yeah. over there. Do you know which one of the computers they're going to win offhand? Yes, it's actually the one that's the. It looks like the Dell GX620 desktop. Oops. It, 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 I lost. Oh, no. one. Uh -oh. I lost one. This so, is like, this is like mixing a salad. So it, <laughs> it's like an Intel Oops. Pentium. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Did you do this with your chicken breast too at the nugget? Jeez. <laughs> I'm trying to tell it's one gigabyte of RAM, six hundred GB hard drive, DVD, RW drive, network card, thirty day parts warranty, Windows XP loaded, 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 loaded. All right. I oh I have to draw, draw, draw now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is Cindy Deweese. Yay, hey, Cindy! Who? We'll we'll oh my goodness, we are going to announce it on the news as well. But Cindy Deweese, you have won a new <laughs> desktop computer. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, that's why I thought you were going to say you have 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 24 hours. Gonna... No, you don't. No, yeah, no. Yeah. You won. You won. Right. We just have to make sure that we get this across to you that you won. Yeah. So. We'll oh, yeah, them. we do have our phone number. Yeah, we have our phone number down yes. there. Yay! Yay! Well, that was fun. That was fun. So What's it was an interesting week? show today, I thought. And on next, on next week, week, we do have Pahrump Bakery. It is Mom's Day coming already. You know what? Yes. Easter was so late this year. It's amazing that Mom's Day is right after it. And don't forget your moms. Very important. Right. 
Pahrump Floral is also going to be on because the of flowers. Mother's Day. The flowers, the flowers. Mm -hmm. And the Sinfest. What is Cinefest, that? The cinnamon, cinematography, the, yeah. the movie festival. Oh, I thought that when you I said Sinefest, I, thought, okay. you meant, I it's thought you meant I thought you meant cinnamon buns. No, it's cine, right? I, <laughs> I they got to get a name that everybody can. Cin, 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 cine, 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 Oh, gosh, yeah. I just spit at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to be talking about what went on at that. That should be quite interesting. Yes, it a will lot be. more interesting than the Norella wedding, which will That's be over by the time true, we're back. True. Anyway, y'all are great. We love you. We had a great time today. We did definitely. Good to see you, your dapper, handsome young man that you are. I try harder. I know you do. Oh yeah. gosh, we can uh, stretch a little more now. Uh, uh, no, we can't. We'll be back here. Have a great week. Stay safe. See ya. Love ya. Bye.